our special comedy guest on The Dan Nichols Show this week is a young man who's just come off a very successful run of his one-man show at the Baxter Theatre in Cape Town. Apologies for the hair, but he is very funny. Please say a very warm welcome to Jared Pillay. Hey. Yo, good evening. How are you guys doing? You okay? Yes. Cool, man. Uh, like Dan said, uh, my name is uh, my name is Jared. Yeah, I, I don't really like that name. I, I kind of wish, I kind of wish when I was born, I, I kind of wish my parents gave me uh, something a little bit more, what you would call culturally appropriate, right? I'll explain, you see my dad's birth name, right? My dad's birth name is Sada Sivan, right? Sada Sivan, that's a strong Indian name, you know what I mean? And my mom's name, my mom's name is Somaganti. She has Gandhi in her name. Do you know what I mean? Like, it's a strong name. And then I was born, <laughs> and they decided to call me <laughs> Jared. <laughs> How embarrassing. But I figured it out, folks. I figured it out, because if you spell my name, it's spelled J-A-R-Y-D, right? If you spell my name backwards, it spells Diraj. <laughs> Thank you, that's all I have left. <laughs> It's good to be here, man. When I'm not doing stand-up, right, I'm usually uh, emceeing. I don't know if you guys have ever been to an event with an MC, but you usually hear the MC's voice before you see who's behind the microphone. I'm very insecure about the sound of my voice. I don't know why. But every time I'm behind a microphone, you know, every time I make an announcement, I feel this presence right about over here, you know. And I can tell. I can tell it's usually an older white lady. Uh, I can smell the cats. I can smell the cats. And, and, uh, and, uh, and uh, she usually says something along the lines of, Oh, my word. Wow. That's amazing, wow! How did, you, how did you learn to talk like that? That's amazing, wow! No, because you sound so well, but you kind of sound like, but you, you, you know what I mean. What part of Sri Lanka are you from? Wow, that's amazing. And my microphone's usually off at that point, so I say to her, I say to her, you know what, ma'am, this microphone is a magical thing. <laughs> it's like a magical microphone. Watch, watch, watch. Good evening and welcome to the Dan Nichols Show. <laughs> Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to the Dan Nichols Show. <laughs> Did you guys just give me a round of applause for my accent? <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. Uh, so I I'm 24 years old right now. Yeah, I look like I've had a tough life. <laughs> I've got the curious case of Benjamin backwards. Uh, don't do drugs, kids. So uh, I'm 24, man. I figured it's time to move out of my mom's house. Uh, I don't know if you guys ever had to deal with real estate agents before. Yeah, I don't like real estate agents. I don't like the way that they talk to you. They have a very condescending tone about them. Like they talk to you like they own the place. You know, it's very, un this is my impression of the Cape Town real estate agent I dealt with. This is my impression, okay. And scene. <laughs> Here we are in Seapoint, a very prominent suburb, Seapoint. <laughs> On the third floor, mind you, the third floor, if you just look yonder the balcony, yonder the balcony, you'll see the Seapoint promenade. <laughs> just a stone throw away. Can you believe, just a stone throw. Who's this douchebag throwing stones to measure distance? <laughs> it's a residential neighborhood, bro. Somebody's gonna complain. I also understand that impression kind of sounds similar to my favorite narrator. I don't know if you guys know who I'm talking about. Planet Earth fans, Sir David Attenborough, right? I love Davy Attis, man. I always thought a beautiful thing if David Attenborough did an episode in Cape Town, right? But it would have to be Cape Town, December time last year. The episode would start out exactly like this. I'm standing here at the southernmost tip of Africa. Our story begins on the white sandy beaches of Cape Town during its festive months. The African butterfly flutters its wings as it hovers above the overly crowded beaches of Cape Town during its December time. Oh wow, I wonder what that group of people are doing with that sheep. <laughs> I see some of you guys know what happened here. For those of you who don't know, and this is a weird 
weird thing because when this happened in Cape Town, like it, it made me feel a certain sense of pride in being a South African, you know? Because if you really think about it, a group of people took it upon themselves, right, to go to one of the most racist beaches in Cape Town, right? And they, they bought a sheep, guys. Ah, oh, man. <laughs> you don't understand. And they decided to slaughter the sheep to cleanse the beach of racism. What? That's a beautiful thing, man. It's a beautiful thing. Because I'm trying to do my own part to combat racism in this country, you know? It's not as significant, but I, I date white women. <laughs> I don't know what it is with brown guys and white girlfriends, but we love to brag about that, right? It's a weird, my girlfriend's white, by the way. It's a weird, it's like a pride thing. It bubbles up right here underneath my chest. It's just, ah! it feels like I'm doing it for Mandela. Do you know what I mean? I'm just, ah! And if her dad is Afrikaans, oh my God, you're a part of the struggle now. <laughs> I can tell you don't understand. I'll explain it like this. Every time I grab my girlfriend's ass, it's just... <laughs> it feels, it feels almost like I can touch the land. Because it's that flat. That's my time. My name's Jared Pillay. Thank you very much. Enjoy. Ladies and gentlemen, Jared